Right now I have a light blue background and it just, I'm putting this on my body, yet it's filling the entire space. But what's really interesting with this is if I come on here and I put a border of three pixels solid red, you're gonna see that the body's height isn't all of that. The body's like other elements where the height automatically grows as you add more content to it. So why if I put a background on here, it's not the size of this red box? Do you wanna see something even stranger? If I come over here and I go to my HTML element, and let's set a background on this of uh, purple. And well, now, now the blue background has shrunk down. Now that's kind of weird, right? Well, that's something called background propagation. And it's also something that can lead to problems with gradients that don't work on your body as well. And it's what we're going to be exploring in this video. Welcome back my friend and friends. I'm glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I try to help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And while it's something that doesn't come up too often, understanding background propagation is one of those things that can just help you understand a bit more what's going on and be less frustrated by it. So let's dive in and take a look at what it is. So here we are in that example that we were just looking at at the, the top and where we left off and let's turn Turn this HTML one back off. We'll comment it out for a moment and we'll get back to the blue going everywhere. And this actually helps us understand what's happening when we put it on our HTML here. And basically what happens is when we don't have any background at all, we have a canvas color in the back and the browser automatically gives us a canvas color. And that canvas is something we cannot actually style ourselves. Not, not directly at least. We can, we can actually add a color to it. And the, first, this isn't the same as like the canvas, you know, in your HTML. I'm not talking about a canvas like this. Uh, it's not that guy that I'm talking about. It's the canvas that is your background of your page. That's just this infinite canvas with by default white. We can actually switch the color of that as well as our text using the color scheme property, which I looked at previously. And if you're curious about that, I'll link it in the description and there should be a card popping up. Um, but what's going on here is the default of our canvas is this white color. And when I declare a background color on my body, that background is propagating all the way down to the canvas and it's filling up the entire page. So that's why I'm not actually giving this blue color to my body. Uh, it's being propagated and it's being absorbed into whatever. It's the canvas of my page that is now becoming this blue color. And what's interesting with background propagation is if you do it with a color, it just takes over the whole canvas. If you do it with a background image, that image will just tile its way across the whole thing, just like a background image is wont to do if it's smaller. If it's bigger, obviously it, it's a little bit different. Um, but the background image like this will just tile again across the whole thing. So this image is now on the canvas itself. Interesting though, let's come on and give this a background position, position of bottom center. And this bottom center is actually relative to the red box here. It's relative to the body. That's actually this one here is the one that, you know, in the middle here and at the bottom. And we can know that because if I do a background repeat of no repeat, it's now here and it's not all the way down at the bottom. Even though this is a background image and even though that does propagate to the entire thing, the positioning properties still are relative to the body itself. It's this really weird relationship. And that's also why if we take all of this off and I bring a lin linear gradient on here, I'm sure you've seen this happen, where you put a gradient on something or not something, but on your body and it propagates down and you get this thing going on. And again, if we want to make this really weird, we can come up and turn this HTML background purple on and then this happens. <laughs> and well, we're going to circle back to this at the end and explain what's happening there. But uh, yeah, so what's happening here is the background image is following the body. And again, the body is this here. So that gradient is being set to this, but just like my background image will repeat to tile itself across the entire area as background images are wont to do. And well, gradients happen to be a background image. So because of that, it tiles itself over and over again. And that just depends on how much content there is. If we have more content, there's less tiling and you know, whatever, whatever the height of the content is, uh, and this only props its head up if your content is less tall than the height of the body, of course. And so, yeah, we run into this weird sort of awkward problem. And that's where we have to come in and say min height of 100 VH. And even the VH is a problematic unit that you might uh, have run into problems. Though in this case, I don't think that would actually cause a problem. 
So then we can come in and get something like that where your gradient actually covers the entire space uh, and I think works pretty well. This doesn't answer the question of what's happening when the purple comes on. And the idea with background propagation is it's sort of like an inverse inheritance where it's going to look at the HTML element first and it's going to grab the color from that. If the HTML does not have a color, then it's going to inherit from the body instead. It stops at the body though. If there's a child inside the body, it will not take that next step and sort of go all the way up. It's either going to inherit the body's color or the HTML's color, it's one or the other. And that's why if I put a color on the HTML and I put a color on the body, it's taking this one and it's not going to take the bodies. And now the body, we actually see the real size of it and where it is here. And interestingly, my HTML element is actually the same size as this effectively. If we come in, say border 10 pixels solid, we'll go with green this time. You can see there it is. So it hasn't actually expanded out and it's not filling the whole thing. It's just this background color has propagated down to the canvas um, instead of the light blue here. That's all that's happening. And very interestingly, if you go and read the spec on this, the spec actually does recommend that you put the background color on the body itself, background color. It does recommend you put the background color or image if you're doing a linear gradient, whatever it is. It says declare the background on the body when possible rather than the HTML element, though it doesn't elaborate on the why, but we're sort of looking at a curious case of a strange CSS property, so I thought I'd mention that as well. Now, if you'd like to know why I just fixed this and put that as background color rather than only background, uh, with background and with a few other properties, I actually advocate for most of the time avoiding using the shorthand. And if you're curious about why, I'd recommend checking out this video right here. And with that, I want to say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Doug over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.